Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about Intel, no need to explain what they do. Absolutely huge company, giant in the semiconductor industry and in the technology industry in general. Uh, beaten down in recent years in terms of the share price and hasn't done much. It's lost out in process knowledge to Taiwan Semi and Samsung. And it's lost out in market share to AMD and NVIDIA in terms of the, well, in terms compared to the fabulous technology producers. Uh, it's still an absolute giant in the semiconductor industry and one that needs paying attention to. It's an all-in-one place, one like AMD and NVIDIA. It has its own foundry and it's also in the data centers and personal computers market and a few other markets. Uh, I'm going to look at, there's some recent news that really attracted me to make this video. And then I'm going to analyze some financial metrics, look at Intel's plans, run a DCF calculation and decide, do I think this is a value trap or do I think this is an investable, an investable business with a good outlook for the future? So I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, if you're enjoying the content. So a few months ago in its quarterly earnings report, Intel mentioned a lot of CapEx spend that it was going to need, and it kind of put investors on notice that things like share buybacks were going to be suspended because Intel was going to be spending a lot of money in CapEx on the order of $20 billion a year for the next few years to try and play catch-up, basically. And today they announced that they were going to be selling their mobile eye self-driving segment, or it's going to IPO next year supposedly uh, this could be worth a tremendous amount it seems like exactly the right time to do it. i'm really happy with this news marking it condition dependent so you know things could change but um if management decides to sell it, it'll be mid next year and the valuation looks frothy to say the least uh intel bought mobile i five years ago for around 15 billion dollars could be valued at more than 50 billion dollars during its an ipo next year which would just be crazy and this is definitely inspired by rivian's ipo recently in the 80 more than $80 billion range. Either way, decent return on investment for a $15 billion investment five years ago. That would quite easily pay for two fabs in Arizona, as you'll see in the next the next slide. Um, again, no guarantees, but either way, it's going to be more than the $15 billion, a healthy return. And I actually think that Mobileye, although it, it has a good roster of clients, it's making decent revenue growth. I think this is a, a segment in that there's a lot of competition. There's Google's Waymo, there's GM and Cruise, there's Tesla of course, there's lots of self-driving plays and this is a very difficult market and there's going to be a lot of consolidation and not everyone can win. Uh, the oil maker market in America for example, there was lots of companies throughout the, throughout the late 19th and early 20th century and today there's four manufacturers really, Fiat Chrysler, General Motors, Ford and Tesla and only one that you'd really want to invest in for the next 10 to 15 years in my opinion. So there's definitely opportunities to be had for Intel to make a de decent return on investment from this. This is this graph is from IT Pro, a good, really good article if you want to have a look at it, itpro.co.uk. Uh, 20 billion for two fabs in Arizona is this kind of capex outlay we're talking about. And these new fabs are going to be operational in 2024. They're really trying to push this along. This is a site where there's already six in the total foundry. Mobileye in theory pays for this and the rest. I would think the absolute minimum they would be getting for Mobileye if you're looking at 50 billion valuation would be half that. And I'm talking like really bad case scenario like market crash. So I think 20 billion for two fabs is going to be easily covered. And this, in my opinion, is really strong because Intel needs cash. And I don't think this 50 billion cost is priced in on Intel's total market cap at the minute. So having a look at Intel's financial strength, these are just graphics from uh, gurufocus.com. Uh, cash today is not ideal right now. Not terrible. Versus history, all the numbers are pretty bad. Uh, CapEx is very large in the in the coming years, so without the mobile eye acquisition, they'd almost certainly be taking on debt. Don't get me wrong, this this the debt is very serviceable and the cash to debt isn't horrendous. It's bad versus the industry, but this is not a horrendous number. It's just bad for Intel. Like This is very poor numbers versus history. But the debt is very serviceable, and I'm definitely not concerned about Intel's debt going forward. I think it's well covered by, by the profits. So again, this is not a concern to me at all. I definitely think this is shown by the Altman score of safe. This is a safe investment as far as, far as the uh, debt profile is concerned, in my opinion. Looking at Intel's profitability and why I'm not concerned about the debt at all is they have exceptionally strong margins. I mean, strong margins just versus the semiconductor industry in general. But strong for a manufacturing company, these margins are borderline ridiculous. Uh, gross margins are approaching 50% and more typically. Strong for any manufacturing industry. Strong for the semiconductor industry and actually weak, weakened versus Intel's historical comparisons. So again, there's, you know, there's a lot of squeezes on, on margins 
in uh, recent years, particularly in 2020 and 2021. This isn't a surprise, but Intel has great return on equity at 25%, great net margins, great operating margins, just great returns in general. So this is not this is not a concern to me from a profitability standpoint. I think this is an excellent company profitability-wise. And this is very much at scale. Intel's a 70 billion revenue company. Uh, this is very at, very much at scale and a mature company. So these profitability numbers are absolutely excellent. So just moving away from fundamentals, I'm going to in, look at Intel purely from a stock basis. Uh, very, very cheap. Exceptionally low valuation based. If we're looking at purely on fundamentals and forget about Intel's future growth and things like that, which I'll come to in a minute, um, this is exceptionally cheap for the industry. For Again, forgetting about growth, AMD is valued in the 40s. NVIDIA near 100 on a PE, ratio, PE basis. This is looking at Intel, a PE of 9. You've got to bear in mind that roughly a quarter of Intel's market cap is if Mobileye were to IPO tomorrow for 50 billion is 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 Mobileye. That is incredible to me. Uh, growth is obviously the difference in these in these valuations, but the fact remains by by basically any metric, Intel is very, very cheap based on its pure fundamentals. I think this price in basically an absolute worst case scenario for Intel that a P a PE of nine for a company with this margin profile and this at uh, this scale to me suggests that its revenues are broadly declining and expected to decline for the future. Uh, the peg ratio is 0.64. This is absolutely incredible to me that we're expecting strong earnings growth for the next few, for the next few years, or strong re- relative to what's happened previously. Not necessarily strong for the industry, but strong for Intel. And we're seeing a, pr- a price to earnings ratio of nine on a, even on a forward basis when we're expecting that to be a bit lower because of capex and whatever. Fourteen, like you know, these are these are not. This is a very, very cheap company. It's very unlikely you'll see a company this cheap with the quality of Intel, in my opinion. And looking at it from a discounted cash flow rate on basis, so I've used EPS for this, looking at the more the intrinsic valuation. I prefer EPS for mature companies because I think, well, particularly for Intel, free cash flow recently has been a bit all over the place, so I don't think it's a fair representation. Um, but I get it still has a really strong margin saving and is well below fair value on a free cash flow basis. But 9% earnings per share growth seems reasonable to me. It's a mature company, so I think this seems reasonable. Uh, discount rate of 8%. I've added the fair value, uh, the the tangible book value to the fair value. Uh, terminal growth rate of 4%, which again, I think is a, maybe a bit harsh. Uh, I think these are all completely achievable. Earnings per share, uh, 10-year rate, Intel has actually been relatively weak over the last 10 years and it's still growing earnings per share nine percent so i think this is this is fine and we're looking at a margin of safety of 54 percent and pretty much doubling of the stock price from here 100 percent upside and then some so this is absolutely crazy to me like intel is to me right now on again on a purely fundamental basis and absolutely screaming by and has such a tremendous margin of safety uh, i don't get me wrong i like amd and nvidia as as investments i'm a shareholder in both but they, in the event of a market downturn, these are definitely more risky investments than Intel. Intel, it looks absolutely solid from a fundamental basis, and this margin safety is really attractive. So the reason of the valuation difference between Intel and its peers, if it wasn't already obvious, is because Intel has pretty much maintained its revenue. In quarter three, it was up 5% year over year, basically nothing, slightly below guidance, but you know who really cares when we're looking at talking 100 million on 18 billion revenue. Uh, strong, strong, strong gross margins. Again, for manufacturing industry, these are really strong 57% gross margins, in my opinion. Again, up slightly, but with nothing to talk about. Earnings per share up greatly. The problem, realistically, is that Intel are just too, uh, just far behind in process knowledge. The way the way that, uh, this manufacturing system works is you need to make Intel at 9 nanometer chips, then it drops to 7 to 5 to 3. That's where Taiwan Semi are aiming now. 5 nanometer is the leading edge at the minute. To get the, you can't just go from nine to three. You need to build up the process knowledge to get down to seven, to get down to five, to get down to three. This is not a short-term process. It's going to take Intel years to bridge this technology gap. They're far behind in process knowledge, and it's not going to happen overnight because Intel really, need, really needs to do this. And they've set out a plan, as I'll explain later on. They've set out a roadmap that I think seems reasonable, but it's going to cost a lot of money, and cost a lot of money means depressed earnings and depressed share buybacks and depressed dividends possibly so these all this is part of the reason why mobilize the sale of mobile i makes so much sense for intel and i'm so happy with it so looking at the full year outlook again this is part of the reason why valuation is relatively depressed 
uh, basically flat outlook up 1% year over year, not much to talk about with the revenue. Gross margins slightly down, but again, not much to talk about. And EPS up slightly year over year. These are capital expenditures going to be the, in the 18 to 19 billion range. That is significant. That's like, it's not far off 10% of, mark, of the Intel's total market cap. So that is significant. And again, the reason why mobile, the sale of mobile makes so much sense. Uh, free cash flow 12.5 billion. So there is definitely a deficit there between how much it's need to spend and how much money it's, it has free. Uh, relatively weak outlook, in my opinion. Uh, margins are compressing, but EPS is still strong to summarize. None of this is of great concern to me if Intel can enact it on its long-term outlook. So Intel's long-term outlook, it looks simple on paper, but in reality, it's going to be quite hard, I think. Uh, 10 to 12% and compound annual growth rate over the next five, four to five years. I'd be very, very happy with that looking at the current situation. Uh, 50 to 53% gross margin over the next two to three years. That's slightly depressed from where they are now. And then moving upward, you can, this is understandable considering the things they want to be doing. Uh, as I said, CapEx is going to be really high in 2022 again, up or more from the previous year. So 25 to 28 billion dollars. Uh, again, why why mobile selling at peak valuation next year will be such an intelligent thing to do, in my opinion. And potential further growth in that CapEx in subsequent years. They really need to cap to push now. And I love that Intel is finally getting on the attack and stopping this defensive mindset this in the last few years. And they are committed to help to a healthy and growing dividend. I wouldn't be surprised if the dividend disappeared in the short term if, if things get hard. But the management are committed to it and they're putting pen to paper and saying we're committed to growing the dividend. I think if they can achieve all four of these things, which is a big if, this could be a tremendous stock, both for growth investors and for income investors. Um, the dividend already at a nice 2.7%. Healthy, It's relatively healthy. And if it grows, that'd be an excellent for income investors. And 10 to 12 compound annual growth rate with 50% margins at this sort of scale, those margins would be incredible at this at the sort of scale Intel talking about. And 10 to 12 compound on your growth rate for a manufacturing company is that is completely reasonable in my opinion. So this is a section of Intel's roadmap to get back on top by 2025. I'm not going to go into the intimate details of it. Basically, they want to make smaller and smaller chips, capture the competition, and bridge the process knowledge gap. Whether I believe them that this is achievable by 2025 or not, to me is immaterial. What I love is that they're trying and they're trying earnestly. They are aggressively attacking this problem. They're cashing in on Mobileye. As again, as I said, a perfect time to fund this responsibly and not take on loads of debt and make this an unattractive investment. They're maintaining the financial strength of Intel and attacking this problem head on, which I like because bluntly, like if this goes on for another few years, market share cannot be won back at a certain point. Great companies remain great companies. Intel is a great company, and sometimes great companies have a tough few years. Apple, at some at, at one point in the 90s, was having a tough time, and they recovered, and they went on to be the biggest company in the world. Like Intel is having a rough time. The gap is not insurmountable, but it's, it's going to be tough, and I like that they're attacking this problem head on. So to summarize, I think investor sentiment's been against Intel for a while, and rightly so. AMD and NVIDIA have... Uh, quickly eating up market share and Taiwan Semi and Samsung have got a great process technology lead but again these odds are not insurmountable in my opinion I think these are more than priced in Intel is getting is getting the sort of PEs that a company in decline with great margins again Intel is not in decline it's roughly maintaining right now I'm not saying it's, it's like a growth machine but it has the potential to be management a, a predicting 10 to 12 percent compound annual revenue growth or at least they're, they're hoping for that and I believe them. I believe this is completely possible. And I think I don't think this this potential is priced in on Intel's price at all. I think this price is purely based on Intel maintaining, maybe slightly declining. But Intel is firmly on the attack right now. They're spending like it. They're spending for growth and they're spending to play catch up and aggressively. I think this is definitely possible. I thoroughly believe in Intel. I don't think at all that I don't think the mobile the mobile eye is really at all uh, priced into this market cap. So I really like Intel's price at this point. I've been buying a few shares recently. Uh, I've never been a shareholder of Intel before. I'm, I'm really liking it at this price. I really like its prospects. Re bef before now, I was concerned. I thought it might be a bit of a value trap because they didn't really seem to have a handle on how they were going to solve the problems. But management in the, in the third quarter report and talking recently and selling mobile, I, I think they've really, really had a, a turnaround in their, their attitude. And I think this is a great company to invest in for the next five years and beyond and I'm going to be loading up in it right now.